discussing facts. We have patriots of Syria here with us, and I'd like, I think it's it would be the right thing to do to give the floor to the small boy here, Hassan Diab. He's only 11 years old. You can see him on the white helmets uh, footage. Uh, he's an alleged uh, victim of the chemical attack. But first, I would like to ask his father, Amar Diab, to say a couple of words. And after that, after, if, if Hassan wants to say a few words, he will be given an opportunity to do so. Good evening. My name is Amar Hassan. I'm a father. Uh, of this little boy you can see here. I'd like to speak about the truth of what happened. Uh, uh, um, my children us, heard the screams that they needed to go to the hospital, so they went to the hospital. They saw fires in the streets. They saw smoke. <coughs> so they came uh, to the hospital, through the tunnels near our house. In the hospital, some people took my children and brought them to the to the ambulance and they started uh, pouring water on them, cold water. Now, because of that, uh, they have suffered and my wife uh, explained that uh, these children were brought to this hospital without asking their parents. Later we found out that this was a fake. We saw absolutely no evidence of uh, chemical weapons. And uh, all of my family, all of my family members are feeling well. We were in the basement and we heard people shouting that we needed to go to the hospital. So when we were in the hospital, we went there through the tunnels. Uh, at the hospital, they started uh, pouring water on me, cold water. Thank you. So, let's continue our conversation. Uh, the next participant of our talk today Khalil al Jaish, a doctor. Khalil al Jaish. He's an expert in resusc resuscitation. Good evening. We came here to inform the world on what happened in Duma. Because what happened uh, goes against what was shown in the media and spread through the media. Because the video you have seen uh, shows uh, 
Uh, the hospital, the emergency rescue department, and I have been there. I have seen what happened, and what happened was not was had been shown on this video. Because on the 7th of April, I have been in the hospital. Uh, about 7 p.m., we uh, had people coming in as uh, uh, suffering. Uh, from asphyxiation, um, but the, the fact is, uh, it was because of uh, smoke. So they were had difficulty breathing because of smoke intoxication. And the reason it happened was because nearby building has been bombed, and uh, there was smoke and dust that uh, came inside into the hospital, into the buildings, and uh, in the shelter where people were hiding, uh, people unfortunately uh, inhaled all this dust and smoke, and this is why they had difficulty breathing. So the systems, symptoms of an asphyxiation were uh, relatively mild, moderate, and we did everything that uh, we were supposed to do, we gave them oxygen masks, we proceeded to, as we always do in such cases, we gave them hydrocomartisone. Then a person came, uh, one of the white helmets, and he started shouting that there was a chemical attack, that chemical weapons have been used. And after that, at the emergency care, we saw people uh, creating this hysteria, this chaos. In the hospital, they started dousing people with water. We didn't believe these people because we, know, we saw no symptoms of chemical attack, of chemical intoxication. So there were no evidence of chemical weapons use. All these uh, things, uh, all the people uh, who had suffered from asphyxiation uh, came home later that day. There were no deaths, no, no, no people died during that day. And this is the only emergency care in all of Duma. Now we're waiting for the next commentary by Abdurrahman Hijazi, another resident of Duma. Good evening. My name is Abdurrahman Hijazi. I'm a resident of Duma. I'm a freelancer. I am not. I do not work at the hospital. I. Uh, I'm just an ordinary citizen. I came to the hospital that day because I had this. Uh, uh, small problem and uh, about uh, about 6 p.m. We saw, I saw people coming in into the hospital uh, claiming that they were from the civil protection. They started claiming that uh, they had people with them that uh, had suffered from chemical weapons. As a person who was inside, actually inside there, I could see that these people uh, were, were okay. I didn't feel any kinds of uh, smells or I didn't see any kinds of evidence for chemical weapons. But what they did, they create this atmosphere of chaos. They shouted, they screamed. But I can say for certain that nothing bad happened there. 
I didn't feel any uh, chemical weapons. Uh, I didn't see any people beside me and any, any other people affected by chemical weapons. So several hours later, I came back home from the hospital. My house is about one kilometer away from the hospital, so I went on foot. I felt okay. And after I came home, I didn't feel any other any symptoms uh, or anything that would indicate uh, any chemical exposure. Now, as for uh, this water dowsing uh, performed by white helmets, what they did was uh, they were just uh, getting them clean because of all the dust and uh, smoke uh, after the explosions. So there were no evidence of chemical attack in Duma. Thank you. Спасибо большое. Следующий у нас для выступления лаборант больницы Саида Дас. At the lab in the hospital. Next we'll hear Saeed Das, who works at the lab in the hospital. Good evening. My name is Saeed Das. I'm a, uh, I work uh, at the laboratory at Duma Hospital. I perform blood analysis and I collect uh, blood from uh, <coughs> Um, from the patients. So this is a lab that works both uh, for the hospital in the whole and for the emergency care. Now, it all started on Friday. There were a lot of people. There are a lot of people who suffered because of the bombings, the air strikes. We worked at the hospital uh, on Saturday uh, as well, this, and at the, that day on the 7th of April. I was at my lab, I was collecting blood, and uh, I was uh, transferring it to the emergency care. Now, I was in my lab when I heard that some people in the emergency care were screaming about chemical weapons. Now, after taking the remaining uh, blood capsules with the blood from the donors. I ran to see what, what's happening. I came there to find that the floor has been completely doused with water. Uh, it was very chaotic. I could smell dust and smoke. But this was a result as a resu result of uh, a, uh, an air strike that happened uh, some time before that in the streets. So the smoke just came into the hospital from the streets. I asked the doctors uh, there what has been happening. Now they said that uh, it was nothing out of the ordinary. It's just people were scared. They said that. This chaos started there because the people uh, from the shelter upstairs started coming down into the hospital. Also, there were people there outside the hospital who wanted to get into the shelter. And so many of these people were also shouting about chemical weapons. So these people who were inside the hospital, they were dousing these uh, alleged uh, victims with water. And so we were there inside. We saw everything. We didn't put on any masks. We didn't hear any smell of chemical weapons because 
if the, this had been chemical weapons, we would uh, some, su suffer some of the effects. We would feel something, but, it, but we felt nothing. Thank, Thank you. So the next on the list is uh, Muvafak Nasrim. He's a, a male nurse. Good evening. I am a uh, paramedic officer uh, at the Duma Hospital. I was in the hospital on the 6th and 7th of April and on the 8th of April, April as well. I was at the emergency care on Saturday on the 7th of April. We were receiving people who suffered from the airstrikes. There were all kinds of uh, uh, there were people uh, coming at the seven, about 7 p.m. with symptoms of uh, smoke and dust intoxication uh, with asphyxiation. So these were cases of asphyxiation. So these people came down from the sh from the shelter. So we did uh, all we could to normalize, the, stabilize their situation. So as, as you could see on the video, there were people coming in, screaming, shouting about chemical weapons. And as a result of their shouting, people started to feel fear, they were frightened. And so there was this atmosphere of chaos, of anarchy. And one person brought a small girl, a young girl, into the hospital. We checked her, we, uh, we looked at her, but we found uh, no evidence of chemical weapons. There were no chemical weapons used on her. We didn't find any symptoms or any evidence. I was in the hospital on the 8th of April, and there was nothing that could show that there had actually been a chemical incident. Now I'd like to give the floor to the person who did not participate in this fake video by uh, White Helmets. His name is Yasir Asil Mabjit. He was in a different uh, uh, place at the hospital and he could see everything. Uh, good evening. My name is Yasir Abdel Majid. I'm a surgeon at the hospital at Duma on the 7th of April. On that day, I was in the hospital starting from 7.30 in the morning. I was the surgeon, surgical department. During the day, we uh, had people coming in with uh, all kinds of wounds uh, uh, that uh, were due to the uh, hostilities that had taken place during the day and the, sh the shelling. At about 7 or 7.15 p.m., there was a person who came to the surgeon, surgical area with the girl who was just about one and a half or two years old. It was said that uh, uh, she was brought there by, the, by an ambulance and they needed to consult a surgeon. It was also said that this girl was, uh, has suffered because of a chemical material. And uh, when 
we saw her her body temperature was lowered she was uh, uh, wet with water and uh, her stomach uh, was uh, swelled so I examined her and uh, from my point of view, from the point of view of a surgeon, she was healthy, but uh, I was surprised that they said that she suffered a chemical attack. I examined her more broadly and I was sure that there was nothing of that sort. I asked her if she really felt that there was some kind of a chemical used on her. Uh, after examining her, I couldn't find any evidence, any symptoms uh, showing that she had suffered because of some chemicals, her general health was good, there were no symptoms showing any chemical evidence, chemical uh, weapons exposure. So I helped her to dry her clothes and uh, I gave her a blanket. Covered her with a blanket, and once I saw that uh, she was okay, that her general health was good, that she hadn't suffered uh, any kinds of wounds, uh, I gave her back to the ambulance. And for the rest of the day, for the rest of my shift, I stayed in the hospital performing surgeries to the people coming into the hospital. But as I've said, this girl, it was said that she suffered a chemicals attack. And after my examination, I didn't see any evidence, anything that would indicate that she has been exposed to a chemical weapon. Thank you. So, we still have some people who would like to talk. Now I'd like to give the floor to Ahmad Khashoi, who has been working at, at the hospital, at the emergency care. His name is Ahmad Khashoi. You have the floor. He went outside. Mm -hmm. Mumtaz Al Hanash, medical surgeon. Mm -hmm. Вот мне подсказывают, что Ахмад Хашой Ахмад Хашой I uh, has just uh, left uh, the audience for a couple of minutes. Uh, now I'd like to give the floor to Muntaz Al Hamash, who's a uh, paramedic. <coughs> Uh, uh, greetings to everyone. Uh, my name is Muhtaz Khanash. I uh, am with the surgical department. Uh, on the day of the incident, I was working on my block. I would like to draw your attention to a few important issues. The first thing is that working as a medic in that hospital was a challenge because we were short on staff and for those few days from the 6th to 8th of April a humanitarian corridor was open and a large number of doctors, medics uh, went through it. So uh, they chose to left and we were short on staff. We worked round the clock for three days in a row and uh, working like that, as well as uh, the high numbers of people who turned for turned in for help, uh, led uh, to the fact that we could not give uh, people the high quality service we wanted to. Uh, we had help from uh, people who did not have proper medical training or experience 
and many of them are on the video. You can see them working haphazardly, not the way professionals should work, medical professionals. And when there was that person who claimed that uh, um, chemical weapons had been used causing panic, in the emergency department, that's what happened. And people react to that. They started to apply medical measures uh, the way they thought uh, was OK without consulting the uh, proper medics. Although our hospital does have a special department for such cases, and uh, there were some people in the emergency room two at the time we were operating on them I like to say that some people came into this surgical room uh, they went in from the next building they had some uh, difficulties breathing they were coughing a lot but after the medical exam we did not uh, see any symptoms that would indicate of uh, uh, them suffering from a chemical weapons attack. Uh, that was caused by inhaling much dust. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. I give the floor to Ahmad Al Saur, paramedic from the emergency department of the Syrian. Um, Red Half Moon. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ahmad Saur. I am with the Red Crescent in Syria. Uh, our emergency department was taking in emergency patients. That's uh, what we do. We provide uh, the first medical aid. Uh, the Red Cross is not working temporarily, and uh, from 6th through 8th of April, it was the same. That was due to the military, ongoing military operation. I was working at the time, and uh, our department was checking in patients. On those days, from 6th to 8th of April, we did not register any cases of chemical poisoning. All the people who checked in at the time, uh, they either checked in for... Um, medical help, uh, getting drugs, or with the injuries, such as injuries from debris, by debris. And none of those patients showed any signs of chemical poisoning. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can see that Mr. Ahmad Kashoy Administrator with the emergency department is back with us. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Ahmad Kashoy. I am uh, responsible for the logical uh, operations in the hospital of Duma. I would like to tell you what happened on the 7th of April in the hospital of Duma. At the time, I have been living uh, at the hospital for about half a month. At 7 p.m. I was near the uh, the entrance to the hospital. I saw a person come in with a with a with a child. He started screaming about chemical weapons. Uh, throughout the day, we have been uh, seeing people coming in, checking in uh, with all kinds of uh, wounds. Uh, because of the shelling, because of the airstrikes. Uh, now, this person came in, started shouting, created chaos. In the emergency care, there were a lot of people who were frightened. They were panicked. And frankly, uh, frankly speaking, there were people who had problems breathing, uh, but we have seen people like that coming in throughout the day. And uh, 
We saw that this shouting about chemical weapons was used to instigate panic. The hospital in Duma is a very large building, uh, it's enforced uh, and uh, at the lower floors there are many families who live there using it as a shelter as people fled uh, military, uh, they, they fled the hostilities taking place in the city. And uh, once they heard screams about chemical weapons, uh, they were even more frightened. This panic spread, and uh, about, uh, there were about uh, a thousand or maybe one and a half thousand uh, people there at the time. There were people unknown to us that were filming the emergency care. They were filming the chaos taking place inside. And they were filming people being doused with water. They, the, the instruments they used to, to, to douse them with water were used to originally used to clean the floors, actually. All this um, uh, has been happening uh, for about an hour. After that, uh, we provided care to, the, to these people and sent them hope, home. There were no mortalities, no one has died. All the people came uh, among them, there were no people suffering from any chemical exposure. Thank you. And my and our final uh, guest uh, from Syria today is Dr. Hassan Oyun. Hassan Oyun. Doctor. He's a medical doctor. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Good evening. Uh, thank you for your hospitality. My name is Hassan Ayun. I am a doctor with the emergency department. I was on duty on 6th through 8th of April. And I've been working uh, with the emergency department since 2013. I worked, um, I started my career in Damascus. And uh, what Dr. Montaz already said, is that a lot of uh, medical professionals left our hospital during those days because of the humanitarian operation. So we were forced to work in challenging conditions uh, because we had to use help of unprofessional, unprofessionals, um, people who were not properly trained. For many years, people in Duma uh, used, have been using um, car tires used or, uh, to, to, to cut and to burn them for um, fires. So uh, I was working on 6th or 8th of April. Uh, my duty was, I was to be relieved from my duty on the 8th, but there was no replacement, so I continued working. Uh, we began to get in, uh, in patients, checking in, uh, the injured and the wounded uh, from the military action. Uh, and that continued like that uh, for the next day. Uh, we had uh, from 15 to 20 people with some um, difficulties breathing, uh, we gave them a check and we did not see any indications, any obvious indications of any kind of weapons. Um, their pupils uh, were normal. 
There were no signs or indications in their bodies, in their ribs. Uh, so they were all suffering uh, light or medium um, um, inconveniences. Uh, we gave them um, all the help we could and they left the hospital in a few hours. We did not uh, leave any of those patients for further, um, uh, we did not check them in to stay with the hospital for further care. Uh, there were no complications so with any patients on that day. Uh, that's uh, what I wanted to say and uh, thank you very much. Uh, that, that's what I would like to add to the whole discussions. So, uh, thus, today, the state's participants to the Convention Prohibiting Chemical Weapons and the active member of, that, of the Council of the Organization, uh, the um, observer state, and now, as we uh, speak to the international community through this press conference, we are delivering evidence and testimonies indicating uh, that what happened on Duma in, in, in Duma Hospital on 7th of April was a provocation by the white ha helmets. So all those people uh, feeding off the taxpayers, especially in the first place, uh, the United States and Great Britain. All right, we'll dip out of that uh, now. You've been watching for more than the last hour here on RT International. Uh, Russia's defense ministry giving a presentation on the alleged chemical attack in the Syrian city of Duma on the 7th of April to the OPCW in The Hague. The Russian representative to the UN's chemical uh, weapons uh, watchdog speaking, the doctors on the scene that day, crucially, Russia's head of chemical defense forces, and again, crucially, and Poignantly, a father and son caught up in it all, all with the same message. They say a chemical attack didn't happen, and that video that was so widely circulated in the hospital purporting to show something like that having happened, they say is false, a false flag. Our Europe correspondent, Peter Oliver, has been listening into all of that for the last hour or so. A lot to get through, a lot of witnesses put forward, with a lot of detail, Pete, all with the same message, though. What stood out for you? A lot of details, but one very clear message running through it. And I think it was hammered home by Alexander Shulgin, who's Russia's permanent representative to the OPCW, the Organization for the uh, Protect for Prevention of Chemical Weapons, uh, saying that they believe that the attack in Duma was a provocation. Uh, he went on to accuse France, the UK, the United States of tugging at heartstrings uh, by showing uh, child victims as they were portrayed in the media. Media, um, saying that the evidence that Russia has and which, which they've put forward to the OPCW shows that this was, and I quote, sloppily staged. Um, we also heard from the Syrian representative to the, uh, the OPCW who said that uh, Syria had destroyed all of their chemical weapons back in 2013. He also refuted these claims that there was any type of chemical attack that took place. And then we heard from the Russian military um, representative who spoke there, Igor Kirillov. Uh, he said that if you look at the video, if you look at the actual canister, that in the video that's supposed to show the, the delivery mechanism of this attack, that logistically it would be impossible to deliver a chemical weapon in such a way. We have to remember that we are led to believe that on the 7th um, of April that as many as 70 people were killed after a chlorine and sarin mix were used um, in a chemical attack on this town. Um, but then what we did hear from, we heard from some of those people that were in those videos that had been circulated widely. We heard from Hassan Diab, who's an 11-year-old boy who's uh, filmed uh, in those, uh, those videos being doused with water afterwards. He said that we had, uh, we were told that we should go to hospital and we went through the tunnels to the hospital and we were told we'd been the victim of a chemical attack. His father said exactly the same thing there. We did also hear from doctors who were present in the hospital at the time. They said that they treat people who had symptoms of asphyxiation. They treat people who had suffered from smoke inhalation. They did not say that they treat anybody who had suffered from, uh, well, what you would imagine uh, being the, the, the 
the, the repercussions from a chemical attack. There was, uh, they, they pointed out that there was no smell, that there was no, um, uh, that there was no physical uh, presence of a, ke of, of a chemical agent on the bodies, uh, things that you would expect if there had been a chemical attack. Uh, we heard from one surgeon who was there on the ground um, saying exactly this thing. So we have heard from a number of um, witnesses that have been brought forward by the Russian side and by the Syrian side saying that this wasn't a chemical attack. The Russian side, as I said, going as far as saying that this was sloppily staged and designed to look like a chemical attack. Um, certainly incendiary words. We're going to have to wait and see what reaction comes from this, but as it stands, the Russian stance and the Syrian stance on this remains the same, that there was no chemical attack in Douma and that this was some kind of provocation. Yeah, indeed. Peter Oliver, our Europe correspondent, watching on there. So it went on for more than an hour. A lot of detail, a lot of witnesses uh, put forward, as you say, mm. all with the same message. Now, one of the witnesses of that incident in Douma we heard from was the 11-year-old boy, Hassan Diab. He was filmed in a hospital in Douma uh, being treated for what was uh, alleged, uh, allegedly a chemical attack and symptoms of it. Here's his story. <laughs> We were outside and they told all of us to go into the hospital. I was immediately taken upstairs and they started pouring water on me. Do you remember where it happened? Here with the hose. Where is it? Here it is. They poured water on me. They put me here and then took me upstairs to my mother. That's me in the video, that's me. Yes.